Freedom First continues. On the eve of the Second World War, only Liberia, Ethiopia, and Egypt were independent. But by the end of 1959, that is 20 years later, there were nine independent African states, Egypt, Sudan, Morocco, Tunisia, Libya, Liberia, Ethiopia, Ghana, and Guinea. In 1960, Nigeria, the Congo, French Togoland, French Cameroons, and Somalia achieved independence. They were followed in 1961 by Sierra Leone, Tanganyika, Uganda, and Nyasaland. The, independent, the independence of Kenya, Northern Rhodesia, and Zanzibar cannot long be delayed. This fundamental change in the African situation has been brought about by the struggles and the sacrifices of the African peoples themselves. And nothing can now stop the rushing tide of nationalism as long as a single foot of African soil remains under foreign domination the battle must continue. It may be that the time has come to have a common political party with a common aim and program. For instance, instead of the Convention People's Party in Ghana, there might be the Ghana People's Party. In Kenya, the Progressive Party could be the Kenya People's Party in guinea the guinea people's party and so on each party having one common aim and objective the freedom and unity of africa the various people's parties with their common aim would cooperate with each other a central organization would undoubtedly be necessary and also a highly trained headquarters of staff. If this kind of solidarity on the party political level could be achieved, it would surely strengthen African continental freedom and unity. Party leaders in countries which are still not free would be able to derive a strength and inspiration from close association with their opposite numbers in independent countries. Though beset by difficulties, they would gain confidence from being part of a strong continental organization with immense resources which they could draw upon in time of need. From its inception, the Convention People's Party declared in its constitution that it would seek to establish fraternal relations with and offer guidance and support to all nationalist democratic and socialist movements in africa and elsewhere which are fighting for national independence and self-determination among independent countries the common party would act as a unifying force. Also, if a common domestic policy could be worked out, it would help immeasurably in the planning and development of the African continent as a whole in the economic and social spheres. The unevenness of development in Africa both political and economic, is a major problem. Some countries are poor in natural resources, others rich. Some achieve independence comparatively easy and peacefully, others are still struggling. The obvious solution is unity, so that development can be properly and cohesively planned. Countries under alien rule achieve independence in different ways. 
India was promised freedom by steady evolution towards self-government in ordered constitutional stages. In fact, it took 27 years of civil commotion and passive disobedience for India to achieve her aim. Libya was granted independence by the United Nations Organization as a direct result of Italy's defeat in the Second World War. The Portuguese colony of Goa was liberated by India. Several countries in the Middle East owe their existence as a separate states in the Western to the Western powers when they carved out the Ottoman Empire after the First World War. In Africa, the, nat the nature of the freedom struggle has varied according to the background conditions against which it has had to operate and the position of the international scene at a given time. Generally, in territories where there is a settler problem, the struggle has been more prolonged and sometimes violent, as in Kenya during the Momo period. Where there is no settler problem, as in West Africa, the struggle has been hard, though on the whole peaceful and constitutional. I have already told how independence was achieved in Ghana. Looking back and trying to determine the reason for the successive out, successful outcome of our struggle for freedom, one factor stands out above all others, namely the strength of a well-organized political party representative of the broad mass of the people the Convention People's Party represented the ordinary common folk who wanted social justice and a higher standard of living. It kept in a daily living touch with the ordinary mass of people it represented, unlike the opposition, which was supported by a galaxy of lawyers and members of other conservative professions, the self-styled aristocracy of the Gold Coast. They did not understand the new mood of the people, the growing nationalism and the revolt against economic hardship. Thinking that their lofty assertions were enough to win adherents to their ranks, they made little effort to come into close contact with the masses in the way that I had done in my early days as secretary of the UGCC and continued through my years of leadership of the CPP. So there we have it, another reading from former and late president of Ghana, Kwame Nkrumah.